Hey guys, we're back. This is the 289 uh, Road Race Project. I'm going to try to do this without the shop lights because I was getting, uh, we're getting stripes across it. So what what we do on this? Well, the first time I bolted it on stock, I goofed up and I forgot, I forgot one of the plugs. So I figured, oh, 10, 10 CFM. Yeah, no, that that's not accurate. <laughs> that's not accurate at all. So what I wound up doing is I did first cut on on one side, four runners, and then I bolted it on the bench. So I have four first cut numbers, four completely stock numbers, and second cut on everything. So that's what we're going to look at. As it is right now... All right, guys, sorry, interrupted by Wiffy. I don't even know where we were. Uh, I think we were talking about the plenum. Yeah, the plenum's had quite a bit of work. Uh, this has been opened up to about where I want it on the upper plenum. We did our notch like I always do. We did as much in the lower plenum as we could get to. The radiuses are all done with a burr. Okay, as far as what we're doing right now, the radiuses and so forth, as everything's done with a burr. I think I did, I think I did this with a, a coarse sand roll. Okay, so that's what we've got in the plenum. Okay, you would think it'd be quite a bit better than stock, but in reality, it takes, it takes a lot to improve on it. So let's take a look at what it did stock. Let's take a look at what it did first cut. Let's take a look at what it did second cut. Okay, if we have stock here and these four numbers, that's without the plug. Okay, so then I did in red, first cut, one through four. That's these guys right here. 223, 233, 244, 225 with plug. I did this one without the plug, it was 246. That is after it was already worked on, so it only gained a little tiny bit. Okay, stock, five through eight. This is what it really flows. Remember I usually say, performer RPMs flow around 220, 222.8, 224, 230, 227. A little higher than, than a lot of performer RPMs, but this is a pretty decent design. You know, I like how they have the uh, runners relatively equalized in length. Each runner has a, a hard turn in it somewhere. So they're all going to flow pretty similar. Yeah, the plenum depth makes a huge difference. How it comes off the plenum makes a big difference. So try to equalize that and get them all up. Well, next thing we did was second cut, one through eight. Cut divider at that point. We went from... We didn't do a first cut on this, so we're we're up to 233, 236.7, 239.4, and 235.6. Pretty even as far as front to back, upper and lower H. Okay, how do we do over here? 234, 230, 250, 238. This is the only one that's really an anomaly. 250. So our highest is 250, and our lowest is looks like 230, right next to each other. And they're very similar shaped runners. Okay, they're both lower H. So that's this one and this one. So I'm going to have to take a look and see why this one's so much lower. Now, I did have, I did have an issue when I was flowing. Let me flip the manifold over and show you what, what I wound up doing. As I was flowing five, right, this runner, it was only 216, whereas completely stock it was 222. Okay, I knew something was up. Well, what had happened is I had stuffed this runner to the point where it started to block this runner. So I need to be aware of that on a design like this. Because after I pulled it out, it went 
233 up from 216. So I know it was being blocked a little bit. Is it possible I had something like that here? Let's take a look. Okay, I really don't see this having the same issue because you've got a relatively long runner here and I'm not going to pack that entire runner. It'll probably be packed up to about here with foam. But I don't see it going right to the the plenum entrance and causing a problem. So I definitely need to see why this runner here, where is it? This runner here is our low flow guy. Okay, that's what we got for a Delta CFM between our best and our worst. Let's take a look at the ends and I'll show you what I did. Okay, we're going to use different lighting. I don't, I don't have a single flashlight that's lit. Wait, let me see if I can find one. All right, we're going to try it like that. So, uh, which runner is this? This is three. Okay, I didn't do anything to the opening size because I don't know what gasket size the CNC heads are going to come through. Uh, my buddy Bill sent me a picture of them on his CNC machine and sent me a picture of the chamber and ports. Uh, I got a feeling you guys are in for a treat when we get them in. They look sweet. And uh, I'm looking forward to working on them. Uh, Going to be something similar to the TFS uh, CNC heads that I did for the big block Mopar. They're already CNC'd by a reputable company that knows what they're doing. They're going to be tough to improve on, but I'm going to do my best. And then after I know exactly what the size is, I can adjust these a little bit one way or another. As of right now, I'd like to get them as even as I can to actually kind of get ahead of the curve. Okay, three is our best flowing. That's the shape, very straight, right off the plenum. Uh, and the port is not blocked by the curve of the plenum. Our lowest flowing is two. And the way the plenum is, is designed, is, is gets blocked off quite a bit. So that's really what I think is hurting us more than anything else is the entrance to the plenum. Let me show you that. Okay, can you see that the entrance on the left where it's blocked, whereas the entrance on the right is wide open right under the barrels? I have to work on that some more, but I have to be very careful because this has all been thinned. And we don't want to cut into the, the plenum the other plenum, I should say, the upper plenum, or the upper runner that comes out this way. All right, the divider is done the way I always do my dividers, and the textures are not completely finalized. I'll probably do something with our, our runners in there. Depends how it starts to work out, and after I bolt it on the head, it'll, I'll know a lot more. But as of right now, what have we got coming in? we got a couple cool things coming in. The big block olds head I was helping to, to develop for my buddy that wants to cast them. He wants to cast them and CNC them. Well, he did some changes on it and uh, he couldn't he couldn't get it anywhere near where it used to be after I worked on it. So he begged me to, and he sent it back. So we'll have that to uh, look at soon. What else have we got? We've got these heads coming in. And we've got a small block Chrysler coming in. It's going to be a stroker with 675 heads. Same heads that I did for DV's uh, Mission Impossible engine. But we're going, to, we're going to go a little bit off on them. We're allowed to put bigger valves and stuff in them. It's going to be kind of cool. I just have to make sure I don't make holes in them. Because I think they're going to work out really well. I think what they do, maybe I got two... 230 out of those heads. I think that's about all I got out of those. But that was with a 1.78 valve. So we're going to be putting bigger valves. I think we're going to wind up using uh, Magnum style valves. We're going to put smaller guides in it. And we're going to use Magnum style guides. It's not a super high uh, dollar project. So using, using stuff that we can get readily at not a super high price is going to work. Oh, I know what I have to show you guys. I got a really cool call yesterday. Let's go over my notes. Okay, we got a got a call from a customer. Now this these are heads that I didn't 
I didn't work on. He worked on them. Guy from uh, up north where I come from. He worked on them. He just wanted me to test them. So if you look back in the archives, you'll find a set of uh, LS3 Brodix BR3 heads. And he brought in a couple sets of heads. And these absolutely pounded the other set of heads. I don't remember what the other brand was, but the other head, the other head was a nice head too. And he did work on it. And this, this head just totally beat it. So what he did is he built a 398 LS, 11.8 compression. One of those gigantic CID intakes. Look it up. It's like all plenum and little stubby runners. It is for a drag, a drag race engine. Dominator flange, he tested it with a 1050. It had a cam motion solid, uh, solid roller done by, uh, done by Bobby, the kid that won Eric's cam competition. At 50, 267, 287, 750, 740s, 116 lobe center. Now, as soon as I look at this, I look at how big that cam is, I look at that compression, I go, well, that doesn't have enough compression for this. But it's designed for nitrous. N2O, it's a nitrous cam. Now, it wasn't dynoed with nitrous, it was just dynoed with fuel. Some of the other parts, two inch headers. Muscle machine dyno is where it was done. Peak torque. Take a look at this, how high this is, 6,800 RPM, 498 foot-pounds. The peak, between 83 and 8,400, 722.2. He asked me not to show the uh, dyno sheet. He, he sent that to me. He sent me videos of it running. It sounds great. Now that, that's all motor. Not bad for that many cubes. Is it high RPM? Sure it is. What's it in? It's in a Fox body with a power glide. A 9.5 inch Frank Lupo converter with 411 gears. I have a feeling it's going to run really, really well. Give me, uh, give me your input on that. And it was really nice hearing from somebody, even though I didn't do the port work. I just tested it all for him. He was thrilled to give me a call and let me know. And, of course, he called up, you know, people like Bobby and let him know. And uh, it's funny. The, the cam guys were like, yeah, that's where that's going to peak at, that big a cam. Uh, that's, that's their job, right, guys? All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.